Smithers to the motherfucking R. Here today, fucking finally edited video. I know, I know, I know. It's fucking out of order. You think I can put this? Fuck, fuck. Anyway, Smithers to the motherfucking R. Here today, of course, to give you Kamisama no Inai Nichi Yubi episode 9. I'm not gonna lie. This series. Episodes 1, 2, and 3 were by far the greatest. And then after that, it's been down and down and... I mean, yes, episodes are still good, but I don't know. It's just not what I'm looking for. I mean, the first two episodes were full of such despair and emotion and crazy-ass shit, and it was good. It was, it was amazing. It was, it was the top of the top. But, with these episodes now, it's like, they're still neglecting to show us the dark sides of this world. Where are the dark sides? We need the dark side. Like, what happened to wor the world is a dangerous place? It's, it's like a fucking family vacation trip. Like, legit. Like, basically, in this episode, they drop everybody off at one of the, um, one of the girls' places. I can't remember exactly their name, but everybody's over there, and they're going to all go into their own destination later. And so now it's just, of course, I, that motherfucker, that, <laughs> that dude with red hair, hell yeah, and the ghost. And of course the baby, Cecilia. Or C Celsius, Celsius or some shit. Fuck it. Anyway. But the thing is, the thing is, and then, think. Like, the first half of this episode is basically the dude doesn't want to celebrate his birthday. Like, like, like he's like, fuck birthdays. I want to go take over the world. I got a dream. Fuck birthdays. Such a trivial thing. And I was like, no, you can't do that. And I'm like, it was, it was like, but I get it. I get it. She's trying to instill that you can't forget dates like that. You got to keep them with your heart, because it's supposed to be celebrated with loved ones, and it's supposed to be like that. And, actually, I actually like that moment. I actually did. But in the very beginning of this episode, when the dude's like, I'm gonna take over the world, you know, and then she's on the other side of this fucking pillar, and she's like, and he's like, he's like will you help me? She's like, yes, but first I had to find Scar. What? So what did that do? That basically said, you like these no longer cannot be an antagonist if they had the same goal and she's like as long as it will save this world she will destroy humanity with him well it now makes it a lot easier for this dude to destroy humanity because I mean come on bro he's just very accurate I don't see a nigga like that killing off every single fucking human and shit no 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 get the fuck out of here with that shit that take his entire lifetime plus more I mean damn but, but besides that the thing is, I, she's like, as long as it'll save the world, her goal is to save the world, and we never knew exactly how it was, we assumed through peaceful means. But now it's like, she just wants to save the world, she don't give a fuck who it is, how, how she does, she just wants to save this world. And apparently she's going to bounce off this dude's idea of saving the world by destroying it, because he considers the, this world, aka a, just a small community. And all he has to do is destroy that small community. And the thing is, it just it just took his thing like of a pro protagonist and antagonist thing. It just took it off the water. And then the last half of this, which is the circle, it's like called something circle, like. And basically, it is the area where gravekeepers are born. And I like this for one reason, because it shows hope that they're going to go to even more worse places on the planet, but I doubt that. If they, they should, though. They should, but I mean, come on. Oh, it's like, what happened to these dead that lose control of their humanity and turn to fucking monsters? Where's that? Where's, where's, where's the dark places of the earth that we haven't seen? Like, literally, they went to this city of the dead, and I'm like, okay, this, this could have some good shit in it. And then... It's like a fucking happy story. It's like, what? What? It's like, huh? 
Wasn't this supposed to be like like a horrible place to go? Like you're not supposed to travel outside the world. You don't know nothing about it. What what the fuck was her father talking about? That's what I'm wondering. You basically made everything her father say sound like a fucking dream. Like the world out there is a horrible place and you won't survive unless you say I can live. Like no, it's just fucking weird. But it brings hope to the theory that it might go back there because they went to a place and apparently it was very fucked up. But I don't know. Basically, what happens is lightning fucking hits the ground, and then after it hits the ground, it's like it's it hits the ground from the heavens, basically. Like he, yeah, like it's from the sky. Lightning hits the ground, and then these weird crystal things in the dirt like mash together and like like yeah, like into a little small thing, then explodes, and then there's a gravekeeper in there, and it's like what the fuck's going on? Like it's it's fucking weird. It's it's there's not enough explanation. We can assume a lot from it, but we can't really have a guaranteed explanation on how they're created. Like, we saw it happen, but it's like, what the fuck? Okay, so, does the crystals have something to do with the gravekeepers, or is it the lightning coming down that's actually their body? But then we saw the lightning hit, and it, it just basically put a hole in the ground, and then everything had to, like, clump up together, like, with these crystals for them to actually have a form. It's like, it's fucking weird, okay? It's, it's really weird. It really is. But... I liked it. And basically, they're walking through the fog. The Ultra was like, no, fuck this shit. This is some Scooby-Doo shit. You niggas tripping. You niggas tripping. I'm gonna fuck out of here. Mm -mm -mm -mm. No, fuck that shit. Mm -mm. I've seen this movie before, and I ain't living it again. I'll see you niggas on the other side. Like, like, she's, she's fucking out. And they continue on without her. Of course, after I and her have like this nice talk thingy. Like, but anyway, the thing is, The stuff, bro, the stuff. This field of these great keepers with these giant ass crystals in it. Basically, they're all walking through it, and the fog gets really thick, and then they all get into like their own little area. And with the red dudes, with the red hair dudes, apparently his is a fucking window. It's like a literally, it's an open fucking window, like floating in the fog. Like, with fucking curtains blowing out in the windows, like, yeah, it's like, what the fuck? But we had to find out what the fuck that was about. Maybe it was his childhood, or a memory, or some shit, but I don't know, though, because the dude, the motherfucking dude, has been with I this entire fucking trip. This dude, whoa. He had a flashback of his wife, like, like a ghost, like, oh, what are you doing? And I, I was... Her mom and her dad. First she saw her dad. First she saw, like, Yuri. And then it was fucking weird. Like, then her dad was there. And then her mom ran after him. And then he's like, why, dad? Why did you crush mom's dreams? Like, like. Like, and then they both say something inspiring that she remembers, like, in a flashback. And then she breaks out of it. And everybody's back together again. But the thing was, it was just, like, whoa. Like, at first when she saw her father, she was all happy and shit. She's like, father? And then, and then it went from that to, she saw her mom and she's like, dad, why did you destroy mom's dreams? Like, like, it was weird. It was just fucking weird. It was like a complete, like, 180 for, on her father's character. Even though he's dead in the ghost. It was fucking weird. But then... Paying the eyes fixed, and everybody else is back together. And then they see Scar, and Scar's at, in this fucking hole, which we can assume was where she was born. And another thing about these um, gravekeepers, apparently hundreds of them can be born identically. Like, they look exactly the same, and they say the exact same thing. We've seen it, and there's like a fucking army of these dudes. And what I'm thinking, if this was going to really do something, maybe incorporate this fucking army of gravekeepers attacking the city of the dead? Like, you... Like, I mean, this is their job. It's like, they're drawn to it, bro. It would make sense, but fuck it. And then, from there, it went pretty weird, actually. Let's be honest. It went pretty, like, whoa. Basically, he's like, Scar, Scar, what are you doing here? And she's like, get that baby away from me! And then, it was it was basically really weird. And God, Scar's like, I'm a gravekeeper. I have gravekeeper jobs. I don't want to take care of this. I'm a gravekeeper. I'm not human. And then, basically, the dude's like, shut the fuck up. What the fuck's your problem? There's a little girl right here. She gonna miss you. What you doing? 
And then, and then they lighten the hits behind him, and he's grabbing her, and she's crying and shit. I'm like, what? This, this series is like, oh. That's the worst part, though. I gotta take the episode how it is and not reference it to the first, second, and third episode. Not yet, not yet. That, that comes at the end when the series is over. I reference it as a whole. But until then, I gotta give it, I gotta give it... 7 out of 10. I got to. As much as I don't want to, I have to give it a 7 out of 10. Because all in all, it was still a good episode. It's not what we want to see, but it still had... The emotional backings. It still had some underseated, like, I don't know though. It was weird. Yeah, fuck it. It was 7 out of 10. It was good with some okay fucking moments. Like, sprinkled all throughout the motherfucker. I have to give it that. Not because I want to, but because I have to. Because I have to take this episode as it is, as a whole, not as a series as a whole, and how this episode correlated with it. It, if it was how this episode correlated with the entire series as a whole, then I'd have to say character development for Scar, but besides that shit, don't give a fuck. I want to see this fucked up planet. I want to see these crazy ass motherfuckers. I want to see what was so dangerous about this world. Why her mom felt the need to branch off. The com my, my mom thought it was so fucking dangerous that she felt the need to create a small nut community without any outsiders. If I had to give this series a correlation with the rest of it, I'd have to give it like a 5.5, 5, 5. like okay. Because it, it technically speaking does give character development and we finally see where the gatekeepers come from, which is something that we need to see. But... Still not showing us what we were promised after episode one, two, and three, which was a fucked up world. What happened to the bandits that would attack motherfuckers when they were just walking by? They're gone now. Like, this series, fuck it. So Smith's the motherfucking R. See you guys next time, and I will see you later, my motherfuckers. <laughs>